Welcome to Magical Women. I'm your host, Connie Boyd. Thank you so much for your messages and comments. We really appreciate them. Please keep them coming and I'll try to answer them all. If you have questions or there's a topic that you would like us to discuss, please comment below. If there's a magical woman you'd like us to interview, please comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel and click on the notifications bell so that you'll know when new videos are posted. Amanda Nepo is a skilled magician and magic creator. She has a solid following on Instagram and TikTok with over 5,000 viewers on her uploads. Amanda's love for magic is evident and her approach is fresh and bright. She's a penguin magic creator and a rising star in magic. She's just completed grade nine. She's our youngest magical woman to date. And with endless possibilities in her future, please welcome the terrific, talented teenager, Amanda Nepo. Welcome, Amanda. I'm so pleased that you're here today and that you're going to provide some insight and interesting tidbits about how you became a magician. So can you start with that? One day I was bored. I was about like nine or ten and I just searched up on YouTube how to do a magic trick. And yeah, I've been hooked ever since. Where are you based out of? Because you've had access to quite a few magic groups. So does that help because you're in a specific location? Uh, I live in New York, like right, I live in like the suburbs, like right above where the city is. So like I'm like 40 minutes away from it. Uh, so usually I go to the SYMs at Tannin's, Tannin's Magic Shop. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and a lot of the stuff that I've gotten is because I've been going to Tannin's Magic Camp for the past four years. So that's really how I got like into the magic community and all. Can you tell us a little bit about your process with penguin magic? Because this is just so exciting what you've got ahead of you and what you've already done without revealing the, the effect. Can you just sort of describe it so people have an idea what you're referring to? Oh yeah, uh, it's a gum trick and pretty much it's like the Trident gum pack. I open it and it's empty. And then like visually you can just see it, I snap, and then it's full of gum. And you could take out a piece of gum and give it to them. Okay, and they could chew it. Fabulous, so it's real. Yeah. So explain how it, how it started and, and, yeah. and where you're going on this amazing journey. Two years ago in like September or whatever, uh, I created this little trick thing. And I, like I created it and then I went to the SYM at Tannin's Magic Shop. Mm -hmm. So I go there and I'm just, I just showed it to friends. But like they seem to all really like it. So, and they were like, oh, like, what are you selling that for? I'd buy that. I didn't know what to do. So then uh, I went to the people who worked at Tana and I was like, oh, do you like, what should I do with this? And they were like, oh, just go to like a magic company. I was like, what? Like, I didn't realize that like, cause like you've seen like products before, but I didn't realize it was like that simple. You just create an effect and then like go to them. Right. So uh, I went to Penguin Magic. Some magicians were friends with Penguin Magic, so they made sure that they watched the video. And like a month later, they agreed to produce it. Okay. So then last summer, in the beginning of last summer, I flew to Ohio. Filming the thing was like really cool because you got to like see the inside on how it was filmed. And then just in general, like you got to like jam with the magicians there. like. Ryan and Amberlynn were also there because they were doing like their own thing with Penguin, mm -hmm. but like I got to talk with them and it was just like having a friend, but like you're talking with these like talented magicians. So that was definitely really cool. What did you discover when you realized how complex it was as far as lighting and camera angles and being aware of your positioning? Now you already have a little bit of that with Instagram, but mm -hmm. Did you learn something further from that experience? Definitely just like in terms of make, it's a gimmick that I am producing. In terms of making it, you have to make sure it's very durable. Yeah, I'd say it was cool to, because I had to go to a place and perform it to people and they'd like film for like reactions and stuff. I thought that was pretty interesting to see. Cool. So, yeah, so you're getting live feedback. Uh, my name is Eric Tate. I'm a producer, a cameraman, director, editor. 
uh, and on-camera talent for Penguin Magic. A lot of my role with the company is when someone is going to come film a product with us, uh, I'm their main point of contact. A lot of people who come to film with us have never filmed anything on video before. And so I help them through the process, sort of helping them with the format. Uh, and then quite often, I'm the person who does the very first uh, draft of the product, of the of the final thing. So I'm taking what we shot and turning it into uh, the, the early forms of what the eventual download becomes. I'm also the voice of our podcast. Uh, I host, record, uh, produce, and distribute our podcast, the Penguin Magic Podcast. Uh, and these days my role is expanding a little bit as, uh, as the times we're in have changed. Um, but, uh, uh, I also teach tricks with us. Um, outside of that, I've been a performer for, uh, quite some time. I started off as a juggler and a sideshow artist and found my way into, uh, magic and comedy. Um, I, in 2018, I won the IBM gold cups close-up contest. Uh, so I, uh, I won uh, that contest, which sort of catapulted me out there. I've put out a number of different products. Ultra Lucky Coin is one of my most successful ones. And uh, I've been on Penn and Teller Fool Us. In addition to that, I do a lot of corporate uh, work uh, with, uh, with various clients. Uh, my clients have variously included Honda, BarkBox, Macy's, uh, big companies like that. Uh, I also do underground comedy nights. And uh, since the world started to change, I've uh, gotten into streaming online shows, uh, right. which is I'm streaming to you from my home office right now. Yep. We've yeah. all had to adapt. <laughs> yes, yeah. Well, that is an impressive uh, history in magic and what you're doing actually today in 2020 is also Thank impressive. You. So It just sounds a lot more impressive than it is. So I, uh, I appreciate that. That's the, the first magic trick of many we'll be doing today. <laughs> um, can you tell us a little bit about how you encountered Amanda Nepo and, and yeah. what you saw in her, what flagged her? So Amanda is one of the youngest Penguin partners to ever come in and film with us. Uh, now, uh, full disclosure, at the time of this recording, her effect is not out yet. When you produce an effect with Penguin, there's a couple different categories it can fall into. And uh, Amanda's trick is a, a really interesting trick with gum, uh, where an empty package of gum uh, visually fills. It's a very, very visual effect. Uh, someone that we've worked with a lot in New York, where she is from, had said, hey, you guys should check this out and encouraged Amanda to submit the trick to us. And that's where a lot of these tricks come from. We're not always developing them, in, them internally. People are sending them to us. And so Amanda submitted the trick. We thought it was really great. So we flew her to Columbus and I was her producer. Uh, so uh, she came into the studio. I met her and her mother. Uh, because she is a minor, we requested that she have a guardian with her. Uh, and uh, Amanda came in, we filmed uh, the construction of the effect. The, the one thing about it is it is a fairly complex build, uh, which is also one of the things that uh, surprised us and also uh, uh, encouraged us to, to get her uh, to release it with us. Now, she's 15 now, but this was a while ago. I think it was over a year ago that we filmed it. Um, it it's the simplicity of the gimmick combined with the complexity of the build really marked it out as something that was interesting because if if you had taken this particular gimmick and made it in any other way, it would have really been bulky and it would have been easy to see a lot of the the parts and the 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 way it worked. And she sort of solved all of those problems in a really novel way. Um, and so the the decision with that comes to do you make it as a fully manufactured gimmick that we manufacture in house, or do you release a sort of arts and crafts thing? But what was interesting was that Amanda came in and she goes, hey guys, take a look at this. And she was really easy to work with. Uh, she took direction very well, especially for someone who had never done uh, something like this before. Unless you've already released stuff with a magic company, it's not an experience you can really prepare yourself for. When you're setting something up for uh, distribution, you have to do your best to cover every angle. Um, you don't have to repeat yourself because the viewer can go back and rewind. Um, but you do need to be very specific and very clear. Now, we're very fortunate in that we have something like nine different cameras on the performer all at once. So we can get things from all kinds of different angles. And we don't have to go back and do many retakes. And we have people who are experienced in coaching you through this. Uh, but Amanda took direction very well. And then um, we were in another unique position where most of the people that are releasing effects with us are, you know, 
25 to 50. You know, they're a little bit older. So when we go to get those performance videos, which are really important for the demo, because unlike a brick and mortar magic shop where you can walk in and you can talk to someone, you can see it in real life, maybe they'll even let you handle the gimmick. You have to be able to make those decisions based on the demo. So those live performances are really important. And I think one of the things Penguin prides itself on is that our demos are very honest. We've got footage of this that I feel like we should release sometimes is um, the entire process is myself, another camera person and the uh, performer uh, will go to a restaurant and I would walk up to someone with a camera and go, hi, my name's Eric. We're from a local film crew. We're filming some magic. We have a really wonderful magician in. Would you like to see magic? And if they said yes, I would introduce the performer and that was it. The performer was there to make or break the trick on their own. And so we did that with Amanda in uh, a really great establishment called Pins Mechanical in Columbus, Ohio, which has got duck pin bowling in the back and pinball. It's also a, uh, a bar, but it's got a food truck. And, and before certain times, people bring their kids for the, the games that they have. So we had to go earlier than usual. And we've got Amanda walking up to, frankly, business people uh, who are uh, there sort of just after work, not really expecting to get blown away. And she's doing all these crazy card tricks. And then she brings out the gum trick. And, we got, and she gets some monster reactions, uh, which is really interesting. I can't wait for the final demo of this to come out because you've got this you know, uh, 14, 15 year old young woman uh, really just impressing these young professionals who were not expecting this. And so by the second trick, they're kind of going, what the hell is this little girl? Like they were starting to like, they were really thrown for a loop. And Amanda hold, held it like a total pro. Um, and so it was really neat. And then afterwards, we always hang out. We usually get dinner. And uh, uh, Amanda was was jamming with us. You know, so it's like myself, Nick Lacapo, uh, uh, Nick Popa, who, who are both really wonderful magicians. And then at the same time, we had Amber Lynn and Ryan Stock were in to film a lecture. And so they were hanging out with us as well. And so we're all just sort of trading tricks. And then Amanda is showing us trick after trick after trick that she'd created, which was neat. Um, and so I think that there was just, she really grabbed our attention because it wasn't just that uh, this one trick was good. It was that she was prolific and, and clever and coming up with interesting ideas. And all of that just kind of grabbed us. We'll follow her career with uh, a keen eye because I, I can't imagine that it, after the gum trick, I'm sure we'll release other stuff with her because she's an, an interesting young creator who is thinking about things in a, in a neat way. <laughs> We have so many fabulous magical women. Don't miss their stories, their struggles, and their successes. Subscribe now and click on the bell to receive weekly notifications of new content. Can you tell the viewers how important it is to have an Instagram account and a TikTok account and how it started and, and it's evolved into what it's evolved to for you? specifically because you've got a huge following now <laughs> thank you um i mean i'd say first off it always starts off slow for me uh i just started posting videos and then over time i learned what videos do well what doesn't do well you know especially definitely now like some of my magic has really been shaped into an instagram thing because i know how to use the angle of the camera, all of those kind of things. Um, so yeah, I'd say one, one thing that's like sort of a disadvantage of the camera is definitely that the camera's always watching. You know, for me, especially now, I always try to have the video look as good as it possibly can. Because the thing I'd hate to see is like it be a good trick and then the one time I perform it, it looks bad, it flashed somewhere, because then everybody's focusing on that. Definitely, you know, making sure it's as good as it possibly can and like taking as many retakes as it needs. Are most of your followers, are they magicians or non-magicians? They are mostly magicians. magicians. So just because like of how Instagram works, they know you like mm -hmm. magic, so they're gonna send other people who like magic to you first. Yes. So now it's just mostly magicians. And, and you've segued also now to TikTok. What are the differences between TikTok and Instagram? I've, I've been kind of on and off with TikTok because TikTok is a little different. It's much less, it doesn't have, it can be much more casual in a sense. You know, it doesn't have to be like the perfect camera or the perfect trick. You can just do like a small video that doesn't really 
that's not really like the greatest trick possible or whatever it is. Um, I'd say something is you have to post more often. Like usually for Instagram, it's okay if I post once a week or maybe, a, of course, in general for all social media, the more you post, the better. But for TikTok, it's really like most people who are like do really well on TikTok, they post a lot. And it's kind of like a spam sort of thing. So it's definitely, I'm still getting used to it too. I'm mostly on uh, Instagram, but yeah. My impression is TikTok is almost for a younger generation, um, just sort of almost like we would have called little bites of entertainment, where Instagram, you have a little bit more detail. People will watch just a little bit longer, but the TikTok videos yeah. seem to be quite short. It's, very, it's different because it's more casual. You know, you see people like, they'll just take a small video and like, it will be just of them shuffling cards or like saying like a random funny quote or whatever. And for Instagram, I can't do that. For Instagram, I want all my posts to be really good, really strong. And I'd say that's like one of the biggest differences for me. Yeah. No, no. Well, it's, it's working. You've got a great <laughs> following on Instagram. Thank so, you. Do you edit from your phone? Do you have a soft an editing software on your computer? How are you editing this for Instagram? Because I'm assuming um, you're doing it all yourself. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just uh, edit from my phone. I have like a small app to cut and like if I want to put music in or not. But for the most part, I don't need to edit that much except for like cutting the beginning and the end and like putting music in. Right. And um, I, I think it's important for the viewers um, that they recognize because you had a very valuable piece of advice that what you post, post the very best that you can, you know, Thank because you. it will stay with you for life. <laughs> so really <laughs> post something that's, uh, you know, that you're satisfied with that you're not going to look back on and cringe. <laughs> I definitely have some cringy videos, but yes, now I really do try to make sure I'm happy with every post I make, you know. The world's your oyster. You've got, you've got um, all the skills right now, so it's fabulous. I can't wait to see where you end up. <laughs> it's going to be a wild ride there, Amanda. Remember to subscribe and comment below.